Having made her debut in the original Borderlands' second DLC, Mad Moxie has become just as much of a staple to this franchise as any of the Vault Hunters. So I'm here to go through and give you all we know and the history of Mad Moxie. So far, at least. Moxie's origins, as far back as they go, is part of the Hodunk clan. They're a large extended family of rednecks obsessed with fast cars, booze, procreation, and the sort. Moxie, as far as we can tell, has always been very sexual and has never really gone through any effort to hide it. The reason this is relevant is due to the clan's obsession with procreation. You see, with the Hodunks, there is usually a clan wife, a woman designated to bear the children of primarily the clan leaders. While it is never explicitly stated if Moxie was the Hodunk clan wife, she did have a child with one of the leaders, Jimbo Hodunk, who they would name Scooter. Many believe Jimbo was Moxie's first husband, though it's never directly stated if they were just married or lovers at the time. But Scooter wouldn't be Moxie's only child she had during her time in the clan. Moxie would end up having a daughter named Ellie, though we don't know who her father is. A more surprising detail many fans aren't aware of is Scooter and Ellie aren't Moxie's only two children. While they're the only ones we actively see, some passive dialogue from both Moxie herself and Scooter allude to other children. There was a time when I'd be out there on the front lines, fighting Jack's troops alongside you. Of course, that was four kids and God knows how many husbands ago. My reflexes aren't exactly what they used to be. Hi, I'm Scooter. I was named after my sister. Hey, come get you some wheels. What happened to them, who they are, where they are, we don't know. Anyway, the birth of Ellie was a cornerstone in Moxie's life. The Hodunks declared she was to be the next clan wife, a decision Moxie was not happy about. Being very caring and protective of her children, she grabbed both Scooter and Ellie and left the clan. Appreciate it, sugar. That reminds me of something Jimbo Hodunk told me right before me and the kids left his disgusting bandit clan forever. He said, Hing dong pong, burn hash burn burn I'll never forget that. Fortunately, during her time with the Hodunk, she had picked up some very useful skills. Due to the clan's obsession with cars, Moxie very much had the knowledge and skills of a mechanic, that of which she would later go on to teach her children. Despite this, she sought to completely abandon her connection to the Hodunks. She began to disguise her natural southern accent with a more alluring, smooth, and sexy one, though it does manifest from time to time. You haven't met the Hodunks yet, have you? Bastards. Every one of them. They think just because you're born into their stupid clan, you have to follow their rules. Date who they tell you to date. Murder who they tell you to murder. And... Yuck. Good lord, I am so glad the kids and I left that stupid clan for... <gasps> oh god. Oh god. Did I go back into the accent? Oh no. Oh crap. Don't tell anybody! She also wound up changing her attire and occupation, predominantly as a bartender and bar owner. She would later end up getting married two more times. Her second husband was a man named Mr. Shank. While their marriage would obviously fall through, likely due to Mr. Shank not being as straight of an arrow as she thought, while there was some bad blood held between them, deep down Moxie still does care about him. Her third husband was Marcus Kincaid, the well-known arms dealer and merchant on Pandora. Unlike her other husbands, these two would remain great friends and even allies after their divorce. While she, even to this date, has only had three husbands, she's had plenty of boyfriends, girlfriends, and just friends with benefits, and even enemies with benefits. As Moxie continued to raise her children, she would accidentally push Ellie away. She tried to get her to work in her bar, and more annoyingly to Ellie, Moxie would try and get her to consider her looks more. Put on makeup, lose weight, and in general, putting more care into her body. Because of this, Ellie moved away to the dust to prove her independence. You met Ellie yet? Lovely girl. Hates my guts. I tried to explain to her, there's no harm in putting just a little effort into your appearance. A little rouge here, some dieting there, reasonable requests, I thought. But a few years of that were enough to make her move out to the dust. Said something about making her own way, that she didn't need Scooter or I. <sighs> Kids, you know. One of the more notable sexual relationships she had was with Lucky Zafford. He was the son of the leader of the Zafford clan. Pretty much the mortal enemies of the Hodunks. How she ended up with him, we don't know, but Scooter holds a particular resentment and hatred towards him for busting his mama's girl parts. Hey, uh, you know, Luck is an old buddy of mine, and uh, by old buddy, I mean asshole that ruined my mom's girl parts. 
Well, sounds like he's in trouble, so you go on ahead and try to keep him alive long enough so I can kill him at a later occasion. In fact, he would later go on to bury Lucky alive because of it. But Moxie never really mentions him. Anyway, because she's looking to settle down, she eventually created and opened the Underdome Coliseum. It's a gladiator-like arena designed to help her find a relationship to be in. As a prize, the winner gets to be with Moxie. My first husband was a dirtbag and a cheat. My second husband was fun. I figured by then that I deserved the toy. All for myself, and that's what I got. Still wish I hadn't broken my toy. My third husband was good with numbers and his hands. We're still friends, kind of. We're civil. I'm looking for my fourth, you know, on the prowl. I don't know when I'll meet him or where I'll meet him, but he's out there. For now, I'll get my jollies off on bringing pain this way. And this is where the original Vault Hunters come into play. While the gameplay allows either Lilith, Roland, Mordecai, or Brick to complete it, Canonically to the story, Mordecai is the winner and Moxie and Mordecai date for a short time. The relationship much like many would fall through due to Mordecai being too inattentive and a slight alcoholic. They say money can't buy you love, but it's a damn good replacement. Though Mordecai might disagree with that, poor guy. I offered him a rack hive's worth of guns and cash for winning the top spot in my underdome, but he never wanted any of it. If I had a nickel for every time he asked me to run away with him, well, I wouldn't need a tip jar, that's for sure. Moxie later appears again in General Knox's DLC to help the Vault Hunters rescue Athena by killing her second husband. While she does help you do this, she feels saddened by his death. You killed my second husband! You actually killed him! I know I told you to, but... I'm sorry. I need a minute. Go get the girl. I'll be in touch. Sorry to be such a party shitter. Trying to make funeral plans and help you escape at the same time. My late husband's cronies will be coming after you. Just take a monster off the old pier, you'll survive the fall. Oh, and pour one out for David. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Shank for me. Her next and probably most important relationship would be to Handsome Jack, whom she left Mordecai for. Despite not being Handsome Jack at the time, the relationship still wasn't good. He exhibited many traits which pushed her away like trust issues and him being a slight megalomaniac at the time. This relationship definitely lasted a decent amount of time as Moxie would tell him of an idea she had for a space casino which he would later go on to steal and create for himself. Due to her recognizing some red flags, she broke up with him, but he would still remain infatuated with her. You remind me of my last boyfriend. Think you met him, name of Jack. Real charmer at first, always opening doors for me, telling me I'm beautiful, shooting anyone in the face if they looked at me sideways. Of course, then he got clingy and I dropped him like a bad habit, which as it turns out, wasn't the best idea. Later on in time, one of the bars Moxie opens up is on the moon Elpis in the town of Concordia, and this is where the events of the pre-sequel take place. Despite not being together anymore, Jack and his vault hunters seek out Moxie to help stop the Lost Legion. She agrees and has Roland and Lilith help out through his endeavors. But considering these are the primary events that turn Jack into Handsome Jack, Moxie and the others see his selfish and megalomaniac tendencies rear their ugly head. So when Jack goes on to try and use the Destroyer's Eye as a super weapon, Moxie, Roland, and Lilith all betray Jack and sabotage the weapon. While Jack goes on to swear revenge on them later when he opens the Elpis Vault, Lilith smashes the vault piece into his face, branding him and creating the alter ego, Handsome Jack. After he takes over Hyperion, he promptly uses their resources to destroy Moxie's Underdome for breaking up with him. One step closer to rebuilding the Underdome. Jack didn't take it too well when I kicked him to the curb. Way he figured it. If he couldn't have the thing he loved, neither could I. He sent his goons to burn the Underdome to the ground. I think he's planning to rebuild it in his own image. But he's missing the stuff that made it great. The flash, the pizzazz, the personality. And his tits aren't as nice. As Jack begins to use Hyperion to slowly take over Pandora, Moxie is forced to move to the Crimson Raiders Town Sanctuary, where she runs her own bar. She helps the new group of Vault Hunters from time to time, giving them supplies and weapons to help take down Handsome Jack. 
Once Pandora is eventually free from the tyranny of Hyperion, Mr. Torg decides to host an off-world deathmatch tournament which the Vault Hunters take part in. Moxie, having lost her Underdome, is missing the Colosseum scene, and so she wants to get back into it as a sponsor. She winds up getting kidnapped by one of the competitors, Pyro Pete, who hopes to prevent the characters from getting someone to sponsor them. But he is killed and Moxie serves as the sponsor for the Vault Hunters for the tournament. She promotes them, builds them up, and when they inevitably win Torg's tournament, Moxie blackmails him into getting the arena for herself. Calm down, Torg. You've got other things to worry about, like giving me your arena so I don't tell your stockholders about this little tournament. How the f*** am I supposed to know that illegal off-world death matches are illegal? Sugar. I think this is going to be the start of a beautiful relationship. To this day, nothing has really been done with the Colosseum. Fast forward in time and we get to the Headhunter Pack, Mad Moxie and the Wedding Day Massacre. After having left the Hodunks clan long ago, she predominantly stayed out of any drama involving them, unlike her children. Scooter having murdered Lucky and Ellie having caused a full-blown war between them and the Zaffords. Here, Moxie is hoping to mend the rift between the clans by planning a wedding between two Goliaths, each respectively from the opposing clan. While the uniting of them does work, it's only as allies against her and her family, and the Vault Hunters are forced to kill the Newlyweds. You killed the Newlyweds! You monsters! You're bleeding right! From here on out, the Zaffir clan declares a blood war on Moxie and the Vault Hunters! And the ho dunks are with ya! Oh, hey, I guess we did sort of unite the clans, even if it's just so they can kill us. I, uh, I'll call that a win. Ultimately, this DLC ends in failure, not really accomplishing much. Unfortunately, while Moxie continues to run business as usual, her son Scooter would go off on his own adventure in space, helping the cast of Tales from the Borderlands, where he would sacrifice his life in order to save the characters. Moxie and Ellie mourn the death of him and build a ramp in his honor. Moxie would transfer all of the rights and assets of Scooter's catcher ride business into Ellie's name. In case you didn't know my son Scooter, he... well, he died recently. He went out the way I always saw him, as a hero. I've said my own goodbyes, but before we rushed off Sanctuary, I found an echo in Scooter's things. Says it's for you, Vault Hunter. I know Scooter wasn't exactly everyone's cup of tea, but he was a good man. And that's one hell of a rare thing on Pandora. It would have meant a lot to Scooter that you did all this. It did to me. Thank you, Vault Hunter. During the Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary DLC, when Colonel Hector takes over Sanctuary, all of the residents are forced to momentarily find new shelter, including Moxie. So considering Lilith saved her life by the time Borderlands 3 comes around and the Calypso twins are running amok, when Sanctuary 3 is built, Moxie takes refuge with the Crimson Raiders yet again on their spaceship. She doesn't have any notable role in stopping the Children of the Vault. The next time she holds any relevance is in DLC 1, Moxie's heist of the handsome jackpot. At some point in time, Jack stole Moxie's idea for a casino and built it for himself. Moxie knew of this for some time, but could never really do anything about it. So, seven years after his death, Moxie decides to run a heist on the casino and add it to her collection of properties and business ventures. Through this heist, she is once again reunited with Timothy Lawrence, Handsome Jack's doppelganger whom she'd met during the events of the pre-sequel. And the two work together to retake the casino from Pretty Boy who's since taken control over it in Jack's stead. While she initially doesn't choose to trust Timothy due to his connection to Handsome Jack, the end cutscene does reveal that she was capable of recognizing that Timothy wasn't anything like Jack from even years ago. She did go on a date with Timothy, who was pretending to be Jack, but that doesn't seem to have led to anything between them at the time. While this does leave Timothy with a smile on his face knowing that she went on a date with him and not Jack, she just leaves off as a flirt. And for now, that's where the story left off with her. Her business empire is slowly growing from just outside bars, and we'll see what she does next with her casino and arena that she obtained from Torg. One of the only other relationships that she was a part of that I left out was one with Motor Mama, one of the competitors in Torg's tournament, but Moxie broke up with her due to her being a cannibal, and that's just a little too far for Moxie's taste. While Moxie may not be one of the most flushed out characters, she does have her own little side story going on. Her whole story is primarily the relationship she's had because she is looking for that life partner, but is just having a little hard time doing it. 
She's obviously very motivated running various businesses all around the world and even Galaxy at this point. She's a very loving and protective mother and it's because of all of these things that fans have come to love her too. So anyway guys, that was the history of Mad Moxie. If there are any other Borderlands character stories you'd like me to make a video on, then be sure to leave a comment down below and like the video if you liked it. But until next time, I'll see you in the next video.